All right, so this is a tutorial on how to recode a lock cylinder to fit your key. If you just bought a generic one online and you need to match your key, uh, you can either take it to a locksmith or just follow this simple tutorial. This came out of a 99 Dodge Durango, but these are very similar on a lot of different vehicles. I can't promise that it'll work on yours, but more than likely it's going to be nearly identical process. Uh, give and take a few little parts. So to get started on this one, there's a we gotta disassemble this guy. On the back, there's a little C-clip right here that holds this arm on. And we can just pop that off. I've already kind of started to make it a little bit easier. Just gonna pull on that little clip and get it off. You can see right there, took it off, and then that arm will come off of there. So it's gonna expose the back of the cylinder lock there. And then on the front, this whole thing needs to slide out, but this little, metal cap is in the way and it might not be on every vehicle but on this one it is so we need to kind of pry that out and it will take a little bit of pressure uh, to get that bad boy off of there but oh just like that <laughs> uh, and then there's one more thing you need to take off it's the spring on the back you can use a pick or a little screwdriver or something. You really just need to pull one of these off and pay attention to how this thing's coming off um, and which side these little grabbers get on. And once you get one of them off, this whole thing will kind of just release. And I just like to set that down and I won't, I won't forget how it went on there. Um, and then at that point, this whole thing will slide out. But wait, you gotta stick your key in first and that will bring all the pins down to, uh, to a level to where this whole thing will slide out. If you don't have your key in there, it will not pull out. Trust me on this one, you have to have it in there, otherwise you will mess it up. So put your key in and the whole thing should pull out just like that. Uh, now you can see that there are a series of pins. Okay, so all these pins here, you got, on this one you have seven of them. Some of the vehicles you'll have uh, less than that. You might have four, you might have five, whatever it is. So all these little pins, they, they just go up and down on springs, okay? And that kind of matches the contour of your key. The idea is to get all of these to be level, and once they're all level, then your your cylinder will spin inside of your your assembly, whatever you want to call that. So the, the question is, how do we get that to match our new key? Well, you need to start by removing them all. You want to remove each one of these pins. You just gra grab some pliers, pull those guys out one at a time, and we're just going to line them up. And there's a little spring inside that hole. See, I don't know how well you can see, but in each side, it's each one of those holes, there's a little spring right there, and it's going to come out. You don't want to lose these guys. And I just like to set them down and... Uh, yeah, so let's fast forward here. Okay, so all of them are laid out here. We have all of the pins out. I kind of kept them in order, but it's not really going to matter at this point. And they all have little numbers on them. Some of them are the same, and it corresponds to the just the pins. Um, the pins. Some of them are identical, some of them aren't. Um, so the, the, the key is, no pun intended here, is how do we get this thing, you know, when we stick this in here now, it will obviously spin freely. But once we start sticking these pins in there, they have to all line up. So, the, so we have to do trial and error on which pin is going to fit in each different section. Okay, so I'll show you an example. Um, Let's just say, all right, let's start with this pin. That's a number one pin. Let's put the spring in there, and uh, let's put the pin back down in there, kind of work it in there, and you can see that it's, you know, it's, it's springing like that. Let's stick our key back in there, and it pulls that pin down, but it appears that it's not quite flush. See that? We can still push it down a little bit, and the way we'll confirm that that pin is not in the right position is we'll stick that back into the tumbler, and sure enough, it's not going to spin because it's catching right there. So that pin is just a little bit high, so we know that that is not the right pin for that spot. Okay, so we're going to pull that guy out and try a different one. And I happen to know which one is the right one for this slot because I've already been through this process. 
and I'll put that bad boy in there. Let's just pretend I got it right this time. I'm gonna put the key in again, and sure enough, that one is nice and flush, perfectly smooth across that top. We'll confirm that by uh, putting it in our key, and it spins nice and freely. So the process is the same for each of those. You have to go down the list, or go down the line, and in this case, I'm just gonna turn it over because the next hole is on the other side. Um, and I am going to pick the, the next one here. I'm gonna put my spring in, and we'll just show you one more example of one that is wrong. Let's put this guy in there again, and we'll put our key in there, and sure enough, that's the wrong pin. You can see how it's high again. You stick that in there, and it won't turn because it's too high. So that's the wrong pin. Trial and error tells us that, that was incorrect. But again, I happen to know which one is right. So we're gonna fast forward. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put all these in in their right order. And okay. So you can see I've got all the pins in the right order. That was trial and error over and over and over again. I had the code written down for this one already, so it wasn't too much work for me. Uh, but now you can see that when I put my key in, they are all going to be flush. You can see on that tumbler that all of these are flush. Now, for some reason, uh, this key had one oddball on the end that still stuck up a little bit high and I decided just to grind that one down a little bit on a, on a grinder wheel, but I could have just as easily left that out as well, and it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Um, so now you can see, let's stick this guy back into its uh, body, and it will spin all the way around. If I take that key out, you can see it's not gonna spin, because all those pins pop up. Stick it back in there, and you're good. So. You just have to remember how to put this bad boy back together. Obviously you put the cap back on. And you're gonna put your spring back on. Just kind of get it to grab on one side and twist it around a little bit. That spring is back on there now. All right. And the last thing to do would be to put your little arm back on there that actually hooks onto the connecting rod. Put your C-clip back on there and pretty much be good to go. Well, that'll go back on there and you'll be done. And that's how you recode your lock cylinder. So one other thing to consider is that in this case I'm actually uh, using this out of a junkyard car and it was uh, from the passenger side, but I needed to put it back on the driver's side. And so they had two different arms on them. One was facing one direction, uh, you know, and one was facing the other. So you have to remember to swap these arms out if you're going to be doing a swap from passenger to driver and vice versa.